Hey guys, it's Tasha. Britches Get Stitches here. Uh, thanks for coming over and joining. I really appreciate it. Anybody that's new, it's great to meet you. I'm glad to have you around. Um, thanks for joining me in my little uh, corner of the internet. Um, anyone coming back? Hi! Make sure you leave a comment below so I can respond. I love chatting with everybody. Or come over and find me on Instagram. I'm also Britches Get Stitches. Um, don't forget it's the double underscore in between so bridges double underscore get double underscore stitches i know there's a couple other bridges get stitched out there so of course i had to make it difficult for you but yeah come over and find me on instagram and let's chat or um you can find me on facebook um natasha betts um i'd love to chat with everybody and um share in this nerdy space that is cross stitch um i decided to go ahead and uh put makeup and um contacts and everything in and uh Brian was like are you going anywhere you look nice I'm like no no I'm just filming a floss tube <laughs> it's what you do right oh goodness um so I have a lot to show I know it's only been two weeks but I have been stitching like crazy so yay um I did actually get back into my sewing corner I was able to do a little sewing down there and I'm like trying to organize everything as it goes. Um, I got some of those uh, comic book boards so that I can wrap up my fabric so I can actually see what I have instead of going and buying more fabric <laughs> for things that I already have fabric for. <laughs> So that's the plan. So I'm hoping to get a little bit more um, sewing content on here, which I know if you're here for cross stitch, like that's that's what you're here for. You can just skip over the um, sewing videos. This is kind of my big space or I, or this is my, I don't know, area where I'm just going to put up different like videos and blogs to kind of track my journey in the sewing and cross stitch. And um, I I've severely been lacking in the sewing aspect of it um, and so I need to get back to it and my first thing I want to show you actually brought me back to it so um, I guess that's a great segue. I have an FFO! So remember like one of my very first videos like gosh it's been a year I feel like it's been a year I finished this um, pattern it's uh, Count It All Joy by Cross Stitch Joe. Such a great designer. Oh my gosh, she's an amazing designer. Um, and a great individual as well. So this has been sitting on my shelf just waiting for like the perfect fabric or the perfect time or anything to pull this together. And um, I really think this goes well. And so I had considered um, like quilting it on. So doing the strips on the side and up and down. But I really didn't like the feel of that. So I just decided to treat it like applique. And so I just folded the edges over and sewed it on and then added this blue um, ribbon on there, which really brings out the color, I think. Um, and so this is a project bag, I guess I should have said. So I continued some of that lace over here and I was just trying something new, I was just experimenting. I don't like how I did it, I'll probably do it differently next time. Um, I'll, like an interior pocket instead of like hanging on the outside. But I just added a little pocket inside here for um, like scissors or uh, the bobbins and stuff that I'd be working on with the project. So, and this is a rather big one, a big project bag. So uh, it turned out well, I really like it. Um, it's giving me ideas for things that I can do with other project bags. Like that pocket was kind of just the start. So just wait. I'm excited. I, I have like a ton of ideas coming down, down the works. So yay. All right. So that's a, officially have an FFO. I'm planning a couple more, but we'll see how that goes. But then I also have a finish and this is the one that I was supposed to finish in January, but it ended up working out because um, the person that I was gonna give it to didn't show up to the January event. So this is the Amanita Witch by Mama Witch Cross Stitch. I probably should have ironed it. You can see there's a, a bump where I fold it. I saw somebody um, the other day, she actually rolls hers instead of folding them. And I'm like, mm, I should start doing that. Get less creases and stuff. There you go, that's a little bit better. So yeah, Amanita Watt. Amanita Witch from Mama Witch cross stitch <laughs> turned out really well. I love that frog. 
he is so snarky. Look at that frog. And then the bees all have, or are they bees? Maybe they're just bugs, but they all have like the wings and then there's the acorns and the mushrooms. And um, this is like a rusty color. And I like accidentally put a brown in for it instead and then made my mistake and realized my mistake and had to go back and, and fix it. So yay, gotta finish. Okay, um, what's up next? So I worked on a lot of different projects this past two weeks, and that's mostly due to the fandom stitching group that I'm in. If you haven't heard about it, if you're not in it, you need to be. <laughs> um, we have March Madness going on this month, and I think there's what, uh, two days left in it? Three days counting today. Uh, and you basically, it's like head to head two whips. So, you, so we started with 16 and the first two and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, they each go against each other. And it's like day one, day two, day three, day four. Every day you stitch as much as you can on one. Whichever of the two of them get the most stitches, so like the first day this joyous season had 500 stitches, but then my next project, which I don't even remember because it lost, only got 200 stitches. Well then joyous season moves on. And so then once you're through those first eight rounds with the 16, then you move into um, the four rounds with the final eight. And then you move in, we're now in the, the two rounds with the final four, and then we'll be, um, tomorrow is the final round with the final two, and then the last day you'll stitch on your winner and see how many you get. And you get points for every 100. So needless to say, I've been switching projects every single day. <clears throat> and so, yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> uh, so I guess I will just go ahead and jump on in. I thought I'd unzipped all of my bags, but I hadn't. Uh, so this one, you've seen this project bag before. Um, a friend of mine at StitchCon gave that to me. And so I've got Welcome to the North Pole, Primrose Cottage Stitches. This was a stitch along that is all completely done and I'm not. Um, this is where you saw it previously and I haven't done a whole lot on it. I feel like I got maybe 200 stitches on it, uh, but there's where we are now. So you've already seen all of this, all of that. I added a bit more detail into the elves and then into the cottages here and just a teeny tiny bit with Mrs. Claus down here in the bottom. But I figured out where the bottom was, so I got to at least cut off the bottom. So I didn't have all that like extra fabric hanging around. But this is cute. I'm using the DMC conversion one, not using the silks and I think it's turning out pretty well. This is a 28 count, just oatmeal uh, colored linen uh, that, or not linen, um, Ada that uh, I think I got it. Hobby Lobby or um, Michaels or something. It's a craft store one and I probably won't zip these bags if I forget, I apologize. Uh, let's see, the next one I worked on was Afternoon Tea by Randall Spangler. This is charted by Hade. And this is the one that I started as part of the, um, we had a pop-up for the Year of the Dragon sale. So this is where I was when you um, saw it last. Uh, I haven't worked a lot on it. I, I put it on um, just to, to keep it in motion. So here's where I am now. Um, I'm just continuing on that frame there. Gosh, that looks really, like when you get close and you see all the different yeah. color nuances and such, it's really cool. And man, this really looks gold to me. I feel like it was 782, which is like brown, but just compared, like when you put it up against that orange, it really looks gold. I think it's cool. Uh, I'm excited for this one. I did pick it because it's a mini and I didn't think that I could devote a lot of time to another like super big project. So I didn't. Um, and it's fun, it's fun to stitch on, it's, it's tiny. I feel like those, what is that stitch? That is 28 count? Yeah, 28 count and I'm doing one over two. Full cross on that one. Okay, now I'm questioning. Am I doing one over two? 
No, I'm not. I'm doing one over one. <laughs> one over one. Full cross. <laughs> I'm really getting into tiny stitches. Really enjoying doing some tiny stitching. Uh, next one I worked on is this Joyous Season by Plum Street. I'm just in love with Plum Street. I've been inundated by uh, all the floss tubes. So I'm going back and watching all my like previous ones like I used to put them on watch later. And then I got like sucked into my subscription list and I was like, well, this is crazy. I'm getting behind on everything. I'm missing out on all the ones that I wanted to watch because I'm still watching the new updates from the subscription ones. So I was like, I'm gonna go back and just like find all the ones that I haven't seen yet because like I mentioned, I like to collect cl floss tubes. And so because I've been doing that, it's all the ones that are like a year ago when like I really dove into like Plum Street and Blackbird and I'm getting all of these floss tubes that are coming up that are showing all the gorgeous Plum Street samplers. So my TBS list is growing again. <sighs> so I had to get back to some Plum Street. So um, this one made it to the final four and it got beat out by the bluey sal just because of the ease of the sewing method i believe but um using all the called for on this and it lives in a me made bag again it looks black on the screen but this is a navy blue yeah hmm. um it is on a 32 count 32 or 36, I can't remember off the top of my head. Well, I guess I have it open. <clears throat> I have all of my uh, cross stitch and everything is in a uh, Excel on my OneDrive. So this joyous season is a 32 count hazelnut by XGO Designs. I need to get it all put into Notion. Although I don't know exactly what Notion would do for me that Excel isn't doing, but I'm a nerd, so. Oh, I guess here's where I was last time you saw it. And most of what I've been working on is down here in this corner. So I added quite a bit on that tree right there. You can see the snowflakes starting to come out of the, the snow. But um, I did pretty much just at the tree since the last time you saw it. Uh, trying to get some of the, the background pieces and such added in. Um, and I'm promising myself I'm not gonna say I need to work on that I need to get back to that any of that stuff because it, that's everything for everybody so I'm not gonna say it. I already said it once <laughs> okay the next one is uh, modern folk embroidery uh, no time like the present don't mind the extra threads here um, uh, did you did I show it last time I don't know if I showed it last time if I did here's where it was Oh yeah, I did because it was the tiny, it's tiny stitches and I had like 250 stitches in an inch. Oh my gosh. So I actually um, measured out the fabric and I cut off the end so I know how big it's going to be. And this is like an extra five inches or whatnot. It's only going to come to here. <laughs> that huge thing is going to go here. That's pretty cool. Um, anyway, so here's where I am now. Like I'm getting some shadow in that. I want you to see the colors. Move the coffee mug. <laughs> Look how tiny. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it so much. I had to switch to a 28 needle. I didn't realize I wasn't using a 28 needle. <laughs> um, so now it's a lot easier. <laughs> now that I've got the itty bitty needle. I wish they went smaller. Um, but I love it. I still love those colors. So I'm using 552 and 986. Uh, and the repetitiveness of it makes it so much easier to do at work. So like, I know that this entire border is this, the same thing. It's these two circles, one of 12 stitches and one of 16 stitches. And so I just put those on repeat and I know how far down I have to go that I've got 25 sets of them. Yes, I'm a nerd. Who was I watching yesterday? I watched... And I didn't even finish it. Okay, I'm gonna find her because I was watching her and she was talking about how she's a nerd, she likes numbers and uh, like has so many data points and everything for all of these. Who was it? Oh, I already removed her from my watch later. 
Mm, I'm gonna look for it. I'm gonna put her name in here um, because she was awesome. <laughs> She's like, I love you. Why have I not found you before? You're speaking my language. I love your mind. Um, anyway, so this is Modern Folk Embroidery, No Time Like the Present. Coming together really well. And this is a 32 count and I'm doing it one over one full cross. I think it's 32. So when I count, I get 32, but that's in the stretched out. So it's probably 36. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up how to count and just verify how big this is because it's tiny. And I have a friend, Michelle, um, who is sending me a 56 count and I'm so excited. Should I do it one over one? Ooh, am I crazy? I'm crazy. I'm not gonna do it one over one. That's just silly. <laughs> Okay, next one is not that one. Where are you? Oh, <laughs> this is all the extra fabric that I cut off. I was like, this is not a pattern. It's ready for a new one. <clears throat> okay, next thing I worked on was Greenhouse of Oddities, Lola Crow. Uh, I didn't get very much done, but um, I, this is where I was last time you saw it. Um, I, it just made me realize why I fell in love with Lola Crow to start with. Um, just getting back into it. Um, so I'll show you the full. This is where I am at the moment. But what I worked on was this section over here. And it's just like such an artist. Like, um, gosh, I, you just, you get into it and you start pulling the picture together. And as it's slowly appearing, like I was just doing... Um, the black and the dark gray for this coat. And of course, as you're stitching it, you're just like following your colors, but it's amazing the depth of the imagery that, that just comes off. Like you can clearly see like the shadows that have developed. Like the, this is obviously a man sitting in the coat. Like I don't even have his head there. And you like, I don't know. It's just, I can't even really explain it. I just, I am not an artist. This is an artist. And it's, it's gorgeous. I love it. So, uh, I have to get this one <laughs> to get this one to 58%. I'm at 52. I have to get it to 58% by April 1st, <laughs> just three days from now. Um, because Michelle, Shinnett Crafter and I are going to race. <laughs> so vote, who do you think is going to win? She's already at 58. So she stopped. She said, uh, she, we were like, I said, I'm at 52 and she said, I'm at 58. And I said, okay, well, well not that close, not that far behind you. She goes, if you get it to 58, then we'll race. So we're going to, we're racing in April to see who can get the farthest. I have so much I want to do in April. Why am I agreeing to this stuff? Because I'm a cross stitcher. I'm crazy. Okay. The next one I worked on <clears throat> also lives in a me made bag. And this is the Bluey Sal. It's the first one by Olive and Lee. Ooh, why are you, don't flicker. That was not cool. Um, I want to do the second one, but that's gonna be a long time down the road because this one has taken me quite a bit um, of time. But this is where it was last time. And uh, this is so far the one that's winning in March Madness because of the ease of using the sewing method, I believe. Check it out. So I've got the name in, I've got all the flowers and the vines. I've got the hat for the gnome. There's um, Bluey and Bandit and I've got Lucky and his dad over here. Um, I believe this is gonna be the grandpa and this one I think is the uncle. Um, and then I think this is gonna be Socks. I know this one is gonna be Chloe and this one is gonna be Mercedes. Um, the terriers are going to be down here. Sorry, this is hard to hold. Um, Coco is over here. So it's just fun to watch them appear. But, um, my friends on fandom are all really jealous that I'm, that I'm doing this one. But it's really cute and it makes me want to keep going. I think this one's going to win. It's just, it just flows really smoothly. Again, because I stitch in hand and it's easier to stitch in hand for me with Ada. And so this is on 18 count. Yeah, 18 count Ada. And I'm just, I'm really enjoying it. I can do it at work. 
I'm using my tablet. Oh, uh, greenhouse, that's the 40 count green fabric that I dyed from Walmart. Uh, okay. Next up is the badge that my husband designed for his um, trip to D&D in a castle. Lives in a me-made bag. And this is where it was last time you saw it. And I, I was trying to shake the needle minder off, thinking it was a bobbin. Oh my goodness. Okay. And this is where I am now. So I put in about 500 stitches. I got um, all of the grass done except for this little part here. Um, this one actually went up against the bluey one and would have won if I didn't have like a bajillion meetings that day. Uh, so I think I'm gonna try to make this one a finish for April to get that to him. He did such a good, good job designing this. That is so stinking cool. Just wait till it's done. Um, this is on a scrap piece of uh, 28 count Ada. Oh, did I show you the needle liner? Cute little girl. Where did I get that from? I'm gonna try to find out where I got that from because I got a bunch of those. So I got that one, um, that dragon one drinking the tea. I got that one from the same place. Um, and that it said easily distracted by coffee and dragons, I think is what it said. And I found it on Etsy um, from Kim's Needle Minders. I got that one. I got the um, Evil Witch one that's on my villains pattern. And then I have another one that is coming up that I'll show you that's um, coffee is the most important meal of the day. As I'm drinking coffee, um, as you should be. Okay. <clears throat> Next up is the Frosted Pumpkin Cottage. This is by The Witch Stitcher. And um, this one, did it win? It won and it was in the top four. I don't know off the top of my head if it moves on to the top two. I think it does. I don't remember off the top of my head. We'll find out. <clears throat> okay, so this one is where I was last time you saw it. I'm loving stitching on this. It's also a 40 count linen. I'm doing this one two over two full cross. Um, Erica from Stitch Studio totally blew me out of the water and she's already completed hers and um, she's probably gonna have hers fully finished before I'm even done stitching mine. Um, but here's the fabric with this gray. And that's where I am now. So I decided I was done working in the black for a little bit and went over to pull in the red. Um, and that's two different colors of red. It's uh, 321 and 666. Um, and then the white that's in there is 3865, which is really cool. I, I just, you would think it's white, um, but it's just a good um, light, off-white color. It's just, um, there's so many different shades of white, which seems like a weird thing to say. So there's that one. Uh, I'm gonna show this one last because I want to talk about it. So uh, next up is the Wizard of Oz. And this one is by, I always forget his first name, but the last name is Gustafsson. I wanna say Stephen Gustafsson, but I'm probably wrong. It is um, charted by Hade. Uh, and I picked this one up as my first really big um, full coverage and was like, I'm just gonna dive in, let's just do it. And of course I would pick the pattern with the most confetti I have seen ever. Like I went through the pattern keeper on this one. This is where it was last time you saw it. That oh, way I can keep talking. Um, <clears throat> I went through the pattern on this and pattern keeper. Let's just see if I have any sort of blocking colors at all. Every single color, and there's like 90 colors in this thing. Every single color, it's all over the piece. And this is a 250 by 500 page, or 500 stitch piece. It's huge. Like, the fabric goes out to like here, and then down to about here, I think is how far it's gonna go. This entire thing, the, like the colors are all over the place. There's no like organizing this at all. 
So I was like, I'm giving up with Royal Rose. I'm not, you know, I did gone through and like converted to Royal Rose. And I was like, I'm just losing so much thread on this because I'm getting like one stitch down here and then one stitch over here and then over there. And like, it, it does not work well. So this is where I am now. I am in the process of color completing these threads. Once that's done, I'm going to stitch where I want because I'm getting a little bit tired of doing all of this. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to do Dorothy. <laughs> um, I'm going to grid out the entire thing because right now I just have it gridded through the Q-snap. Uh, and I am going to stitch all over the place, which is um, sort of one thing that I got from Jen the Caffeinated Crafter. Because I used to think, oh, I'll just, uh, you know, follow the pattern. I'll stitch corner to corner. You don't have to. <laughs> And that was such a weird concept to me, but you don't have to. So I'm going to go stitch Dorothy because <laughs> I want to. And the, the yellow, bring in some of the yellow brick road. And then maybe I'll go stitch uh, the, you know, Emerald City. Um, I just, I need to get out of this corner. <laughs> so I'm going to. But that's where it is. I brought this door down quite a bit um, and this stays out. I'm going to keep working on it because I want to try to get as much of those threads done and it's a Whipco. So um, that's going to stay out. <clears throat> All right. The one I want to talk about. So Stitch is so beautiful. I rant and rave about this, uh, this um, charter designer. She charts the designs from others. Um, she is the most amazing human being. So sweet. Valerie is amazing. If you have not gone over and taken a look at all of her um, patterns and stuff on Etsy, if you've not gone and joined the Facebook group, if you've not followed her Facebook page, you should. <laughs> so right now she's having a 50% off sale. Um, I don't know how long. I'm going to try to get this video up like immediately. So I hope you see it right away. Um, so she's having 50% off sale. Go buy a pattern. Just just do it. There is such a variety of patterns on her page. I'm addicted to um, Ada Rosa. Ada Rosa. Um, and I realized I was going through and I was, because I was trying to pick another um, pattern. Uh, and I was like, I feel like I've bought every single thing by this designer. <laughs> I definitely have a type. So I need to branch out and get some other ones. Like um, there's one by Carolyn Holman that I want. Um, there's a, oh, there's just some gorgeous um, uh, like house patterns and stuff. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Stitch is so beautiful. Just sent me a notification. Um, might be addicted. Uh, anyway, so this is where I was last time you saw a woman in a field of flowers. I guess I should show you. Here's the chart. Woman in a field of flowers three. I have five of the like seven. <laughs> I need to buy the rest of them eventually. <clears throat> um, and this is where I was last time you saw it. And uh, I had noticed, well, I didn't even notice. Valerie had noticed that I had that pink color over in the corner and messaged me and said, hey, I feel like you still have the old chart. This is how great that this human being is. There was one chart, one or two charts or something that there was a duplicate symbol or a symbol that was so close the pattern keeper was making them duplicate something. I don't know. One or two charts. That's it. She took down all of her pieces and verified every single chart before putting them back up. Like amazing to spend that much work, to have that much dedication for something. Oh, I mean, she's just a, a great individual. Highly, highly recommend her. Um, anyway, so I had to go through and pick out that pink that was over here, which makes total sense. Why would there be pink up in that corner, Tasha? I don't know. I just was trusting the process. That's <laughs> what I do. Um, there's that needle minder I was telling you about. And uh, so I picked all that out and then I got like 60 stitches. <laughs> That was it by the time I was done. But then transferred all the data and everything over and um, it's going smoothly now. I cannot put this down. I It's just, uh, it goes with me everywhere. Um, it lives in my purse. Good thing my purse is big enough. Um, and I pull it out whenever I get time at work. Um, I love it. It's so much fun to stitch. It's easy to follow. It's like, confetti without feeling like confetti if that makes sense like there's waves of color um it's 
definitely a different feel to Wizard of Oz. Like that one's fun when I see the picture starting to come. Um, this one's fun all the time. <laughs> you know, there's not real, you can't even like, what is that sky? But it's fun. And um, so she's doing 50% off sale right now. But then on top of that, she's also doing, uh, she does like weekly challenges on her Facebook page. And um, I'm never going to compete with any of these people. Like there's people that are doing like 7,000 stitches a, a week. And I'm like, <laughs> good for you. I got 1,000, <laughs> you know, like, but it's so much fun. And all of these people love the designers. Ada Rosa actually commented on my like picture when I put it in the whip pile or the like whip Wednesday what are you working on and I put mine on there and he actually commented and I was just like hi what's up uh so that was really cool so I highly recommend them go on over there and you'll see a couple patterns in my haul later uh okay so those are my whips and um Give me a second because my hair is bothering me. I'm going to put it back. Put it up. Okay. That's better. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So now I have two new starts to show you. Um, the first one, I should take my list off. I've got a list of like patterns I want to start from this, this book. That's what I do. I go through my, the magazine every week, every month, and I write out a list of these are the ones I want to start and put them on the front of the magazine. So this is the magazine I'm doing. It is the spring 2024, um, just cross stitch. And I started this piece called Tulip Trio, super stinking cute. It is designed by Tracy Richards of Rot Iron Stitching. It is 41 by 88 stitches. So it's like three inches by seven, three, three by six. And this is where I am. Just a random off cut of that 28 count oatmeal Ada and it's so pretty. I love it. Oh, I just, I love the contrast of the black with the light color. And I had to go and get a floss. And now that I've got it, I can do um, the, the stems and such. So there's that one. Uh, don't forget your list. I guess, meh, I'll show you. you can, you'll see them as I start them. I was going to go through and like show you the ones that I want to start, but meh. Uh, next one I started is Forevermore by Long Dog. And this one I started for two reasons. It is going to be our um, marriage sampler. So it's gonna have the, the date that Brian and I got married um, and our initials in there. Um, I also wanna try to fit this year in it or the year I finish it or whatever, but we'll figure that out. Um, but I started it for that reason and because I wanted to start it as part of the um, leap year, leap year sal. And this one's also tiny stitches. So this one is, again, on that 30, potentially 36, probably 32 count linen. I can fold it up even smaller because I have that much of a start on it. And that's where I'm at. I'm using uh, Vicki Clayton silks. Um, I just picked a purple and a gray, which are our wedding colors, to do that. Don't know if it's focusing. I'm trying to hide my face so it'll focus. But I also went through and measured and cut the fabric. And it's gonna be about this big. <laughs> and I love it so stinking much. Here, let me fold it to how big it's gonna be so you can, you can just get a gander on exactly how tiny this thing is gonna be. See, it's gonna be about that big by that tall. Ready for this? That's how big the thing's gonna be. <laughs> All of this detail. I'm so excited. I love tiny stitches. I'm a nerd. Welcome to my nerdy corner of the world. Okay, uh, so those are my new starts. Um, what am I planning? Um, so, I took a gander the other day at all of the styles that I have styled and stitched along for those that are new. Sorry. <laughs> I always forget to do that. Um, so all of the styles that I have, I took a gander at all of them. I actually have the list in here in my bag somewhere. And it's 
like 30 of them, I want to say. Is it really that many? Okay, well, I can't find that. It's in here somewhere. Um, it's not 30 of them. It's, it's like 15. But still, it's 15. And they're ones that, you know, some of them I purchased. Some of them are free. But I'm still behind on quite a bit of them. So I need to get organized. So um, my plan for April is to, if not catch up with all the salves, then at least start them and be organized, like to get a plan together for the rest of the year. Um, it, it's like I can't wrap my head around like everything that I need to do. You know, I started 2024 with all those ambitions, like I'm gonna do this and that and this and that and this group and that group. The groups don't really matter that much anymore. I mean, Fandom Stitching and Whip Warriors are the only two that I'm participating in. Um, late Night Stitchers, meh. I've kind of petered out of that because it's like the only challenge is 750 stitches a month. I do way more than that, so it's like not even worth it. And then there's um, the Halloween cross stitch group, which died two months after I joined it. That was annoying. I spent so much time planning on that, um, but oh well. And then the cross stitching sisters, it's fun, but like the library one just, it is really the only big one and it takes too much brain power. Um, I have so much devotion to the fan and stitching group, probably because we have a group, we have a team like Team Donald, um, even though I'm still talking to Team Hobbit all the time. <laughs> um, we just, there's a lot of camaraderie that goes from having a team that you're working with. And so that just really drives me. And then the Whip Warriors, the same thing, like that is just go, go, go. Like there is something new every day you have to keep up with. There is like a whole plan and like it's laid out for you. And so I'm like, I got this. That's cool. Fun. Um, it's mostly the road trip that I'm doing. Um, I love the road trip. So stinking cool. Uh, so I'm doing those two. Um, and among that, I'm going to try to keep up or catch up or make a plan for the salves. Uh, so that's what I'm thinking for April. I am on a no pattern buy for as long as possible because <laughs> I have a ton of patterns um, and a lot of things that are started and I'm really craving that like big finish. Like I need a finish. Um, and so because of that, I will only be purchasing supplies for the pieces that I own. So I have plenty of fabric for now. So pretty much that's just gonna be thread. Like thread is the only thing that I will buy <laughs> for as long as possible. Um, free charts don't count. <laughs> if I have free charts, if they're, if they're free, if they're offered like as a monthly special or something, then I can add those to my stash. <laughs> just no buying. Okay. A, I also, uh, you know, with that uh, need to have a finish, like I want to finish more pieces. I want to get to more um, like FFOs. I have not a huge stack, but like I've got probably like five to 10 items that I could fully finish. I just need to come up with an idea to fully finish them. So I'd like to fully finish some more items. But on top of that, I also want to get to sewing more. Like I, I miss the sewing aspect. So I'm going to try to do a lot more like sewing projects and stuff. Um, I want to try to catch up with Whip Whipgo. So let's see, what did we have for Whipgo? I've got also on a spreadsheet. So January was 22 and nine. So 22 was Treasure Island, one part. I finished that. Nine was a mini heart sal finish and that was the creation of adam that i finished so that done february was a tinturn abbey page finish and number three which was a wizard of oz one prompt a week well i did the wizard of oz i did one prompt a week that was i, I met all of that um i am in the process of completing the um page for tinturn abbey but at the same time june is finishes month for fandom and you get extra points for that. So I think what I'm gonna do, and I know this is like totally not following WIPGO standards, but it's my board, my rules. I am gonna get as close to a finish as possible. And then I'm going to finish that in June. 
because I want the extra points towards our team. <laughs> oh man, I'm a nerd. Uh, so that one is in progress. I'm actually pretty close. I just gotta um, get it down to 100 stitches left. 100 full stitches, I'm doing that one, 10 stitch. So then March was a Tintern Abbey page finish. Again, getting as close as possible and then I'll finish it in June and using Wizard of Oz for one prompt a week. Done. As long as I finish today's prompt. And then April's Whipka calls are a, oh wait, no. March was a mini art style finish, which I didn't do. And the Wizard of Oz. So I still have to do a mini art page, mini art style, which again, June is finishes month, so I'll get that one as close as possible. And then April is the Tintern Abbey page finish, which I'll get as close as possible. And then Treasure Island one part, which again, parts of Sal's are, are like finishes. So that one is going to get as close as possible and wait till June. So a lot of these are going to close up in June. So right now I've got green for complete, red for called but not started, and yellow for in progress. So a lot of these are going to be yellow until June, and then I'm just going to green light everything. <laughs> yes! Points mania. That's the plan. Um, okay, so those are plans. Um, haul. So I got a couple patterns from Abby Top Knot Stitcher um, because I had a gift card. And so I picked up the castle, which is one of the fabulous houses from um, Cottage Garden Samplings. And then I also got day seven of the... Um, which one? The, is it Teresa Kogut? Yes. The Days of Christmas. Because that the those swans were just really calling to me and had been since last StitchCon. Which, by the way, I am number 61 on the wait list. So it's getting better because I was number 151. <laughs> now I'm 61. So I might still get to go. And I let her know. I said, I can come last minute. Like, the day is blocked off. The weekend is yours. You let me know. So, uh, what else? Um, I got fabric from Stitchery Express. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. This was absolutely amazing. I had a gift card from my mother-in-law and I went to her website, found all the different pieces, like sizes that I need. Amazing, you can have it cut to the size that you need. What? <sighs> um. I don't have to cut it myself. Okay. So I went on there and like all of these different cuts of fabric that I need, put them in there. And, uh, all I had to do was call her up because the gift card, it was like a dig um, a paper one instead of a digital one. It was just funky dunky. Anyway, I called her nicest woman ever. Oh my gosh. Fantastic. Sent her a screenshot of all the pieces that I wanted and sent it to her. That woman got off the phone with me went back to her warehouse, cut everything up, mailed it, put each one in each individual bag with a sticker so that you can put what project it's for so you don't forget, and mailed it to me. I had it three days later. That was Utah. Holy cow, like this pink p package arrived from Utah and I was like, what? That was like, I ordered that three days ago. Wow, amazing service. And she was so sweet, so kind. So if you ever need gridded fabric, Stitchery Express, fantastic. Um, that is the only place that I will go for gridded fabric from now on for the rest of my life. Um, okay, what else? I got the Deadly Aquarium Sal by Lola Crow, had to. <sighs> so I'll look forward to starting that one. I picked up this adorable Akatar pattern. Um, it's from Chocolate Fish Studios on Etsy. It's the one where Nessa's like going into the, the cauldron and she's like pointing <laughs> at the king. Love it. Uh, I got the Long Dog Sal, which is the Bluey Long Dogs, um, by SKB Cross Stitch Designs. Of course, then I found out after the fact that there's a free one on Facebook, so I paid five bucks for it, and then it turns out it's free. Um, it was probably a stolen one or something. Whatever. Um, then I got these three princess patterns, um, on Etsy by Witty Stitch Co. And while I was there, I decided this Ursula pattern, thanks Casey, she recommended this one and I saw it and was like, well, pfft. Witty Stitch Co, here you go. So I grabbed that one. And then 
I went down the stitches so beautiful. Uh, <clears throat> rabbit hole. <clears throat> so Bill Bell was retiring a bunch of patterns on stitches so beautiful. And there were three that I absolutely love. So I had to get those. I think he is now with another company. I feel like I saw him the other day. But anyway, um, I got Which, Which Ways In by Bill Bell. So all three of these are retired, just remember. I got Bedtime, which is so stinking cute. And then uh, I got In Search of the Dragon, which I'm gonna stitch for my husband, eventually. Uh, while I was there, or maybe this was another day for another coupon or something I had, I don't know. I got two more Ada Rosa patterns. I got Surrealism of Beauty. I mean, come on. This is absolutely stunning. And then I got A Girl and Her Kitties, which I'm doing for my daughter, of course. So stinking cute. <laughs> oh, and I have to show you, um, I just remembered, I can't remember the name of it, um, but I just got this pattern from Kaylee Tent Stitch because I needed to. <laughs> what is it called? Okay, I found, it's called Milo, and it's this adorable little kitty. Ooh, so stinking cute. Um, I'm excited, I'm really excited. That one's gonna be cute. Um, what else did I get? I feel like that's it. If not, if I forgot, then I will show it next time. But from like today on, I'm not buying any new patterns. <laughs> Um, so I know, yes, excited to get through most of my whips and to like keep stitching my stash. Okay. What else do I have? I've got my notes going on here. Ooh, recommendations. Ooh, this is my fun part. Okay. So, uh, I wanted to, um, shout out, uh, Miss Illusion Stitches. That's Sarah. She is, um, uh, from, uh, my fandom stitching group. She's from the Hoppets group. She is now one of the leaders of the teams and she just started her floss tube. She's got like three, I think, oh, maybe two. Um, she's over in um, New Zealand, tons of fun. I love all of her pieces uh, and she's just a great individual. Um, Erica from Stitchy Studio, um, she is also a fandom um, pal from The Hobbits, um, designs a bunch of her patterns as well. Chinook Crafter, Michelle, also from fandom. <laughs> You'll see in a pattern. Uh, she is like my stitchy BFF up in Canada. Um, we send things back and forth all the time. She is just a great individual. Um, and I love all the pieces that she does. She and I have different like styles, but still appreciate both, um, both of our pieces and everything. So um, she's a ton of fun. And then Spencer from Stitching Spencer. Uh, she was at my table at StitchCon last year and she is now, I believe on our third or fourth video for um floss tube so please go over and check her out give her some love um then there's ashley the graveyard stitcher i am absolutely addicted to her i think i've watched all of her uh videos at this point or if not all of them then i'm getting real darn close but she um just finished this anchors away pattern that's just so gorgeous these like blues and everything for this like pirate ship go check it out um Daydream Stitcher, Mary, uh, I just found her, I think from Rogue Mama Stitcher, um, because they were all doing this like soda stitch pattern of all them together. But Mary also has like a couple other soda stitch patterns that were really cute. I want to eventually get a soda stitch pattern to do eventually. Like I've got a wish list, guys. Uh, then there's Tara from Wild Woman Crafts. Um, she's like been my go-to, one of my go-to flossers from like day one. So, um, love watching her and all of her work. She actually just finished a model similar to the one that I did. Let's see if I can bring it closer. Um, my husband got me this for Christmas and I just finished it last night. So she actually just finished her own model like this and it just made me smile because it's like, I have one too. I guess I should turn the light off since it's not nighttime anymore um but she's also a great cross stitcher as well and she does a lot of the um, black needle society like patterns and stuff she was just showing a bunch of um she had a, an unboxing for the saturday morning um saturday morning cartoon saturday morning stitching one that was kind of cute um and then uh the hathaway stitchers 
I called them like the sister stitchers or something last time. Like, ugh. talk about brain fart in the middle of a video. Um, they are amazing. I am so sorry I got your name wrong the first time. Um, uh, but they have just a great dynamic between the two of them. So it's fun to watch as well. Lots of birds. <laughs> Uh, let's see, the Black Ribbon Stitch Studio, Denise, she is so stinking sweet. I love her personality. She's just, she just emanates joy. Love it. Uh, Abby Bella Stitch. Oh my gosh. She, I found her cause it was, she's on my, uh, watch later list from like a while ago. Uh, it's Abby. And the first thing she pops up doing is this like disco ball and this, like, hey, look, Abby's got a new uh, device. And like, oh, here's like, the red was like Abby in hell. And then the green one was Abby in purgatory. Like she was just hilarious. But I love her because she made a comment. She starts pulling out her project bag and she's like, my project bags are from Reynolds Food Company. Ziploc bags. <laughs> and I died. I just totally died laughing. Oh my gosh. And then... I just have to say, cross stitch the globe again. I know that we're just going back and forth talking about each other, but Stephanie and Allison, they, it's so fun to watch them because they, there's a difference in them that you don't see in a lot of others. Like they treat everyone as equal. Like I'm over here fangirling by the fact that they mentioned my name or that any of these floss tubers like know anything about me. And they're just like, oh yeah, so-and-so, blah, blah, so-and-so. Like everybody's your friend, everybody's your equal. And I like just appreciate that mentality so much. Um, it just makes everyone feel valued. So you guys have just a great way of making everybody feel important. So thank you for that. Um, my TBS. The item I want to point out today is the Pink Sparrow Sampler by With Thy Needle and Thread. I want to stitch this one. Obviously, I want to stitch everything on there, but I just love the color combination on this one. And I am not a pink person, but this works really well. So, uh, okay. That's all I've got for stitching. So if that's what you're here for, see ya. Uh, please come back. And if you had fun hanging out, there's like a bell or subscribe or a like or any, there's buttons you can push, find one. <laughs> um, and I really hope you guys come back next time. It's been great hanging out with you. Um, comment below um, and we can start up a combo. Um, those of you who are sticking around, I have the sign of the day <clears throat> that I just snagged from signing savvy because coming up with words and stuff to say is getting a little like difficult. Um, so business is the sign of the day. And so you've got your hand down and then, and yes, I'm just watching it right now. I like watched it earlier, but I'm like using it to show you. So this is business, business. I don't know what she's doing with it. Nothing with her. Own. That's business. Um, in French, business is affaire. In Spanish, business is negocio. So there you go. That's how you say business in three languages. Enjoy. <laughs> uh, now, as far as what I have been reading, I'm up to like 88 books this year, guys. <laughs> it's crazy. I've been reading so much. Um, what are my recommendations? I would recommend the Gilded Ones trio. So I just finished the third book and oh my gosh, it was so good. Um, the first one is called The Gilded Ones. The second one, what is the second one? I, I can't remember what the second one is, but the third one is The Eternal Ones. And it is, it's so well written. Um, and the main character is very, I don't want to say personable, but like, I don't know, relatable, I guess, um, just in the way that she is, is written. Uh, so it's based off of these women that when they turn a certain age, they're, um, they're tested to see what their blood is. And if they bleed gold, then they're considered one of the gilded ones, which are considered bad. And so then, um, they, uh, like 
communities and stuff trying to get rid of them. Well, these individuals, they have one final death. There's only one way that everybody, that a gilded one can be killed. And it's different for every one. So they have to try all these different deaths. So they tried drowning her. They tried hanging her. They try. I'm not going to go through all of them because that's morbid. But they tried up all these ways. Like not, I think they tried to kill her nine different ways. She kept coming back. And come to find out, she's then rescued. Well, do I want to get into the depth of it? Okay, ultimately she's rescued and information gets out there that is different than what they were told. I don't want to go farther than that because it is like the plot line of the main, of the first book. Well, at the end of the first book, you're like, great, this is awesome, yay! Second book comes and within 50 chapters, you're like, everything that I just learned in that first book was false. Well, not false. Everything was like turned on its head based on this new bit of information. Okay. And then the third book was just an expansion of just how, it was a continuation of the story in the second book, but it was just, it, it just expanded on the world itself, which I thought was great. I'm sorry, I'm being so vague. I'm never good at giving reviews because I feel like I'm giving too much away. Ultimately, go and read that series. I love that series. Um, we just finished for book club, a book called The Measure. And this one was really good as well. Uh, so the plot line is that um, everybody wakes up one day and you have a box outside your door. It says the measure of your life is in here. You open it up and there's a string. And um, nobody knows what the string is at first, but it comes to find out with like it, within like the first few chapters or whatnot, that it's the measure of how long you're going to live. So people with short strings are gonna die sooner than those with long strings. And then they get to the point where they're actually calculating it out. Like you can actually calculate down to like the year, the month or whatever of um, when you're gonna die. And so it's, it's so thought provoking because it's like, am I meant to die at this point or am I going to die because I think I'm going to die with a short string? So it's like, is there free will? Is there not free will? How much do your choices go into what the ultimate is? Like, it's just, it brings up so many different topics and there, like there's there's politics in there as well like the the whole political thing of like short stringer versus long stringer like it gets thrown out there and it it was a a very well written um book that I just I couldn't help thinking like if this had been, been about a different topic it would have made people so mad because of the political nature of some of the things in there so I just thought it was a very well-written book and a good take on politics and um, free will and fate. And um, I just, I highly recommend that one. Um, I think I'll stick with that because I've read a lot, but I'm not going to go through all 88 books that I've read. <laughs> that would just be crazy. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it for today. Uh, thanks for hanging out. I really appreciate you guys coming. Um, I'm hoping to keep this up the next, uh, two weeks. So, um, today I'm going to spend some time down the sewing room. I'm going to try to get these things all put away, a little bit more stitching and yeah, just kind of enjoy the day. So hopefully this will be up tomorrow. Um, tomorrow's the day before Easter. Yeah, I can totally do that. No big. So yeah, um, have a great night or day, weekend, whatever time of day it is, have a great rest of it. <laughs> okay. I'll see you guys later. Bye.